Try to think back to a time not so long ago. A time before the internet, before cell phones, before personal computers. Hi-Fi recordings and FM radio represented cutting-edge technology, and color television was something reserved for the very rich. It was the early 1960s, and America was in the throes of a full-blown nostalgia craze. It was an era when a group of adults gathered around a piano, smoking cigarettes and drinking martinis, while singing the songs of the gay 90s and roaring 20s was a common sight. No, it wasn't so long ago, but how things have changed. Fueling the phenomenon were the banjo nightclubs that seemed to be springing up everywhere. It all started in California where Sherwood's Shaky Johnson was featuring banjo players in his Sacramento pizza parlor as early as 1954. With the opening of San Francisco's Red Garter by banjoist Jack DePan in 1958, the banjo revival was really on its way. Unaware of this trend, back east, a young Yale graduate from New Haven, Connecticut named Joel Schiavone was plunking on the banjo his uncle had given him years earlier. Using the banjo as a pastime during his graduate studies in business at Harvard, often driving his roommates to distraction with his constant practicing, Joel never thought of the banjo as a profession. He seemed to be destined to step into the lucrative scrap metal business owned by his father. But in Joel's case, destiny was sidetracked. Following his 1961 graduation from Harvard with an MBA degree, he and a friend took a trip to California, where they witnessed firsthand banjo clubs like Mickey Finn's Speakeasy and the Red Garter. Noting that there were no banjo clubs back east, Schiavone negotiated with Jack DePan to obtain a franchise to open a Red Garter club in Boston. Joel recalls, I was an Ivy League educated, naive, amateur musician who couldn't find anywhere to play my banjo, so I decided to open my own nightclub. Less than a year later, the Boston version of the Red Garter was scheduled to open. However, as opening night arrived, the paint on the wall was still wet and the carpenters were still building the stage. To make matters worse, the piano player hadn't shown up. Overhearing the situation, one of the carpenters indicated that he played the piano. So with the heroic carpenter in place, the doors opened on September 19, 1962. Through some rare home movies, here's a glimpse of what opening night looked like. 